All right, this is what's going on here today. Hello, uh, thanks for checking out the channel. So right in this area, you can see that there's some scratches, all right? I did not create these scratches. These scratches were already here. So I'm gonna just demonstrate how to quick clean these scratches up. I'm gonna do a 50-50, cut it in half, isolate the area, and then uh, focus on one side and then peel the tape and you can see what it looks like afterwards. So, and the reason why I'm doing this is to show you what this tool can do and that you don't need anything really expensive you just need to know how the process works so here's what it looks like so right here it looks like there's a lot of abrasion and it's pretty dull you want to use your light to get a side cross reflection all right so it's sort of bouncing this way and then going that way so there's a light and if you look at the angle the light is coming from here and I'm over here looking at it. That's how you can see where the scratches are and really identify whether or not you've uh, corrected the scratches or if the scratches are still there. So let's just get going on it because uh, this is going to be kind of a quick short video. All right? And this is not a full how to do this, it's just going to give you the, the steps that I'm going to take today. And these are your normal steps, but I'm gonna go and uh, work it, you know, just real quick. I'm not gonna, it's not a show car, it's just gonna be a real quick, show you the procedure, and I'll tell it to you right now, it's a 1500, 3000, 5000, followed by wool pad, yellow pad, and gray pad. That's all there is to it. So let's get started. Not gonna even bother clay barring this, I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse it off. So just gonna use some just water, spray that area out. And this is base coat clear coat. So the thing about base coat clear coat is that the clear coat is a certain amount of thickness in paint measured in microns or mils, mils paint thickness. I don't know what this thickness is. I've not measured it. It could be thin, it could be thick. We can do a quick Check the mill thickness. This thing. Okay, and then we put it against the panel. We got 6.2, 6 6.1, 6.6, 6.6, 6 .6. once again, 6.3, 6.2, Sorry about the, the lighting being backlit. I definitely have to get another light. So we might cast a shadow. All right. Uh, then we're gonna do it this way too. We're gonna go hand sand and machine sand. So this whole area will be with the Ryobi machine. This area here will be hand sanded and this area here will be left alone. So let's just check our paint mill thickness. All right, we'll do it real quick and close. Right there. 6.0, 6 6.1, 6.2, 6.1, 6.1. 0.2. All right. So this is a 3M. Just gonna use a 1500 right there. So right here, ready to go. 1500. So 1500, and I'm gonna use a small little sanding block right here. Just a piece I cut out. That's gonna be the black. So. Not even gonna go and pre-soak these. Normally you want the paper to be pre-soaked so it's real flexible, right? I'm not even gonna bother that, bother with that particular thing right now because I just wanna get to showing you how easy it is to do this. So, all right, I'm just gonna get a little bit of water right there. All right, and this surface is curved. So you can go like this 
but then you got to be careful you're not leaving gouging lines with the, the edges of the sandpaper so cross hatching is going to work all right so let's let's just do I, I like to do both i go like this i use my fingertips as a guide stop so it's not completely flat on the panel like this but my fingers are creating like the, the guide stop so I can vary the amount of pressure this finger puts the pressure these two fingers limit the, the amount of pressure by letting it float so I can go this way this way if you want this way and if you go this way you really got to float otherwise you, you risk putting some scoring lines in there the edges now see a little white slurry I'm gonna bring this in close so you can see I'm just doing this you know all right so these the edge of these fingertips that edge of that fingertip with the edge of the thumb right there is my guide stop this finger puts the pressure so I can put more pressure to get a deeper a deeper uh, sand but you want to let the sandpaper do the work so you're creating a 1500 profile with a sandpaper and I'm just gonna do the edge so we definitely now there's we do definitely the edge right so we have a, a definite line okay so now uh, that's 1500 and then we can check it to see if the scratch has been removed so what are we looking at okay here we see scratches that are kind of going like this here we see these, um, still some sc scratches going like this and then we see some line scratches all right that's all fine these are all 1500 scratches and this is because we're doing it so rough so fast we're not touching this we're not touching this we're just going to focus right here all right so this is the uh that's the tool that's what you want to see in action right so this is a 3000 just make sure it's on the pad there no velcro edges inside of it add a little bit of spritz of water to this all right and then using the the lights that's the light setting this is a fast setting so i'm just gonna go ahead and go real we're gonna float on it right it's literally floating the pressure you put on here is going to make it more or less aggressive so even though you have you know 3,000 grit sandpaper if you're really pressing it's going to be a lot more aggressive than 3,000 so just nice low speed you want to change the profile of the 1500 all right okay so now we've changed the profile I can still see some scratches got to go a little bit more all right so you want to remove all your three your 1500 if you don't remove your 1500 with the 3000 uh you're, you're still going to be there when you polish so try to remove them and change the profile to 3000 Check it. All right. So now the profile is actually. We're removing those. A couple more 1500s down here, but otherwise there's actually still some deep scratches. So it's going to keep going with it, and uh, this can get residue from the residue from the clear coat or the the color base coat if it's single stage this is a two stage so it's base clear if it was single stage it'd just be solid red 
you start to see red here, but this is base clear. This gets sort of like a white milky, that's a slurry. This is gonna have some um, residue, so you need to remove that residue. I'm gonna go a little bit more pressure just to help pick up those scratches and get them turned to a 3000 profile. All right, thinking that's looking a lot better. So this tool has pretty, really good control. You can see how slow I'm working the rotation. That's just by holding this not too far, right? See how slow? So I can really control it. Okay. Now the profile has been changed. Here's a quick shot of the profile. The profile has not been changed. Here's the original scratching. Here's the 15 and 3000 now. So the profile has been changed. Do we see any deeper scratches? There's one little deeper scratch. That would have to be sanded down further, but that's actually into, like I can feel the, it's deeper. So this, we'll leave that, all right? Because you don't want to go too far because you don't want to go into the base coat. And we just want to remove the overall, make it look better. That's a little bit deeper than what we want to try to correct today, or right now at least. So the next step will be the 5,000. Here's the 5,000. Put it right there. Okay. Now a little spritz. Spritz on that. A little more. This is a bigger area. You could definitely do the this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Here, you just kind of have to work with the space that that we have. So I'm still going to try to replicate that move. All right. And I'm just gonna change out this tape because it's getting kind of soaked. Let's quick check to see what our, our thickness is. Because remember, you still want to leave some paint for the car. You don't want to take it all off by trying to be so polished. The clear coat needs a certain amount of mill thickness in order for the paint to protect the life of the car in paint. It's 6.0, 6.1. 6.2, 6.1, 6.1. So we really didn't take that much off. We just changed the profile of the sanding scratches. And we're gonna protect the other side from any possible touching of the pad over there. Since I am working with something that's rotating, I like to wear my safety glasses. Stuff doesn't fly into my eyes. All right, next step is the wool pad. Got some compound residue on it, needs to be dressed. All right, let's see if I can get a better light. Uh, it's kind of have to do with what we got. Sorry about that. As soon as I get another light. So you turn on the machine 
uh, know its rotation, it's going that way. It's going that way. So, it's going that way. See that? It's going to put... It's going that way, so I want to be here. I don't want to be on this side because it's going that way towards me. So it's going away from you. Just touch it. Just slide it back and forth. Just a little pressure to help break up the tampon on the pad. Move this around a little bit. And inspect it. A little faster. But this is how we used to spur the pad in the olden days. You didn't have a pad tool. Excuse you a screwdriver. Just make sure your screwdriver is not greasy. Then you always want to look at your pad, and make sure your pad is is getting cleaned up. Alright, a little bit more. All right, next step, now the pad, take the pad out too, because if the pad is not completely clean, you will have issues. So I'm just going to do a light mist on the pad, right, just some light mist, just to help break it down a little bit, whatever residue is still on there, or compound. And really inspect it. Okay, good. Go with some McGuire's 110 here. McGuire's 110. Always shake it up. See, here's that scratch. That's deeper than just sanding it with 15 would do to get it out. So you know what we're up against. Right, there's the scratch. Right here. See, that's a deeper scratch than, than these scratches were. And if you look real close, that might be... Uh, well, let's see how it goes. Alright, so I, now to add some compounding. Alright, and do it a couple ways. You go like this. All right, or you can put some on your pad. I just put some on the pad and this my finger. Um, the reason why I show you those two ways because when you're using a rotary, you can do it like this and then work the rotary, work the compound, and it's done. When you're using a dual action, people are putting it on as drops and Normally, I like to brush my compound down with a paintbrush so I don't have to do any squeezing, squeezing, squeezing with these muscles. All right, so here, just go for it. Now, you want to keep, you want to keep the wool pad moving, all right, because you want uh, to not have so much heat and the wool pad is better than a foam for keeping the heat down it keeps it runs cooler but that doesn't solve the fact that by staying in one spot you're going to be sanding that area down with the pad in the compound so you want to keep moving but you want to move in a methodical way uh, I like to use the light to see what I have or have not polished out so you can start in this area this is the way I do it watch so I'm looking to see See, if, you, if my head is hopefully that my head's not in the way, but I'm using the light going this way to what my eyes can see. I'm putting a little bit of pressure.
looking and we'll check we'll have a look all right there cleaned it up we got some gloss back. All right, got some gloss back now. And now let's uh, get a little bit more gloss. Now the 5,000 scratches are gone. Now we just have to refine and make it look, see I'm just gonna do it my way here, which is normally with a paintbrush. Now remember, this is rotary. I'm just gonna go like that. Okay, and then follow up with. Yeah, another thing too is sometimes your hand might accidentally cause it to go in reverse rotation. You just wanna make sure you, you, you know which way your pad is going. Because if it goes the opposite direction, it might unscrew from that, <laughs> which would not be good. And you want to keep the pad flat. And sometimes you want to use the the side, the edge, just to give a little more cut. But generally, keep the pad flat. I will use the edge just to have a little bite on it. So the thing is, this thing is at 1100 RPM. And you can see that 1100 RPM brings it back. We don't have to go and crank it up any further. It's already smoothed out. So you can look at the lights. It's a little bit clearer. The actual light itself the led the tiny little leds you can see them they're a little more distinct refined this is all hazy and scratchy this is better and this was untouched so you can see the difference there all right so we can go further now that's just wool pad that's a quick a quick pass with 110 on a wool pad. Now we'll go and do a pass with a yellow pad. Get a little spritz on here. And we want to clean this. I'm just going to use this little detail brush. Turn down slow. Now see how the pad's kind of wobbly? You don't want it wobbly. So remove it and recenter it so it's not wobbly because anything that's wobbling is going to bang 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 against the panel you want this smooth so the panel's not getting anything banging against it 210 right there some 210 here we add a couple of drops there. All right, whip it off. Um, there we go. Same thing with the gray pad. Make sure you clean this up a little bit. You can even add a little mist of water. Just a little mist. Just a little mist. Just to get the pad to have a little bit of 
not so crispiness. Couple of drops right there, and go to town. The lighter and lighter you go, the more you create a, a polish to it. So it's back off, back off, back off to give it the high gloss. I'm looking, sorry my head's in the way. Alright, let's go a little bit more with the polish. A little bit more on it. A nice little rotary tool. This thing works. I like this thing. All right. Okay, there you go. That's it. Now let's have a look at it. Polished out. Clarity and lights. Scratches are gone. All right. Now let's compare. Do that 50 50 comparison. You can see. And before we do that 50 50 comparison, I'm going to do a hand, a hand sand or a hand polish. Just so you can see that you can still use your hand to polish it out. Just going to use paper towel. My favorite brand is Dollar General. I'll let you know right now because it has just the right amount of aggressiveness. I'll do that right. Uh, I'll do it right here. Well, this is a big piece that'll. Cover. This is the original. This is where I'm gonna. So you just because it has just the right amount of abrasion in the paper towel, you can actually hand comp. This is how you would hand hand compound something. You know, if, if you couldn't get a machine there, you need to use your your fingers to polish a small little area, or if you just had a small little area that you wanted to just uh, touch up, you know? And you didn't want to bust out with the tools. You just wanted to grab some compounds, some paper towel, your hands, and... Clean it up. There. All right. Just because the paper towel had just the right amount of grit, but you know, it is more tiring than using a tool. You could say, yeah, why don't you just hand sand the whole car? I've done that. I've hand sanded or hand polished a whole car because I didn't have a buffer. Old school back in the early days, we're talking in the 80s, 
we're talking, uh, that's when buffing tools were like heavy and expensive. So if you didn't have one, you were using elbow grease and rubbing compound. So I actually hand sanded or hand color corrected my first paint job with, uh, I believe it was PPG DZL DX33. That's what I remember. I might be completely just saying the wrong numbers, but there. That's just hand sanded right there. So I look at that. Now let's do the reveal. Okay. So this area here, hand sanded, and remove the tape. So now we can see. All right, so this is the area that was covered up. That was the original sand scratches. There's the hand sanding right there. Original scratches. Here's the 50-50 mark line right there all right so now you can see that here's the original scratch there's where the ryobi tool did the polishing right there and this is a hand and this is the original scratches Kind of clean it up a little bit more. We'll remove the compound residue. There. And if you look real close, you can see where we didn't really need to take off that much surface clear coat in order to get the polish back. The scratch is out. See how easy that was? So all those expensive tools that everyone's raving about, uh, $300 and $400 buffing tools. Compound and paper towel. Nothing. Original scratches. The Ryobi, 18 volt, right angle drill, used as a buffer. And that was only $74.95. So just imagine what else you can do with that tool. All right, so just gonna pull this back and So thanks for watching the video. That's something you might want to think about. I'm glad I got it. Uh, needed to do to drill a hole in a tight area, but kind of realized, hey, wait a minute. It's not just a drill. You can use it for something else. So there it is. Thanks again. Have a great day, everyone. Oh yeah, remember to hit the uh, like and subscribe button. Appreciate that. All right, thanks, man. Okay, all right. Bye-bye. All right, so there's the scratch just that was just it is too deep right now. We're not dealing with that, but this is uh, the end result on the thickness. We're at 59 6.1, 6.0, 6.1, 5.9. 5 .9, 5.9, 5.8, 6.0, 6.1, 6.0, 6.2, 6.1, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 6.2, 
5.9, it was like 6.1, right? 6.0, 6.1, 6.2, So we took a little bit off, just a little bit. So imagine if you get too aggressive, you're gonna take too much of that protective clear coat off and there's nothing to protect the car for the life of that paint. Or nothing to protect the, there's no, there's no clear coat to protect the life of the, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There won't be enough clear coat to protect the base coat. So that's why you don't wanna to be too aggressive. All right, but look, no more scratches. In the repair area. All right, that's it.